is the RCUG guideline about thromboprophylaxis in pregnancy, RCUG guideline 37A. In fact, in this video, uh, I will discuss with you the important tables of this guideline because if we understand th these tables, we can easily understand the whole guideline. For the whole guideline, I will inshallah make another video. Okay, so now come to appendix number one of this guideline. Okay. You can see on one side of this um, appendix, we can see the thromboprophylaxis in the antenatal period. And on the other side, means on the right side, we have the thromboprophylaxis in the postnatal period. Okay, now it is very important to understand the antenatal assessment and management to be assessed at uh, booking and repeat if admitted okay we need to understand this thing means we need to understand what are the points which are worth remembering there are certain points which have high score than the other points like for instance we have certain groups of patients which go in the red box means the high risk group okay each and every part will have score 4 means if the patient is having you can see from the appendix that if the patient is having any previous VTE which is unprovoked unprovoked means that it is not related to any single surgery or uh, any other event it is unprovoked VTE any single VTE except a major event related to major surgery etc then those group of patients will be among the high risk groups and we will give the score 4 okay so if, so if any patient has score 4 they are included among the high risk okay now come to the another box there is another group of patient like those with a hospital admission single previous vte related to the major surgery high risk from of Philia plus no VTE, medical comorbidities like cancer, heart failure, active SLE, IBD, inflammatory, uh, polyarthropathy, nephrotic syndrome, type 1 diabetes, mellitus with nephropathy, sickle cell disease, and current intravenous drug use. And another group of patients with the surgical procedures like appendicectomy and ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, first trimester only. These are those patients which are included among the intermediate risk means that each point will be given score 3 okay hospital admission score 3 single previous vt related to the major surgery score 3 okay then they are included among the intermediate risk you can see from the appendix okay to the high risk group we will give antenatal thromboprophylaxis with a low molecular weight and also refer to the trust nominated for thrombosis in the pregnancy okay and as far as intermediate risk group are con uh, concerned we will consider antenatal thromboprophylaxis with the low molecular weight thromboprophylaxis from 28 weeks in most of the cases okay now, com coming down, we will see another group of the patient, like obesity, BMM more than 30 kg per meter scale, age of more than 35, parity more than 3, smoker, gross varicose vein, single preeclampsia, preeclampsia, immobility, for example, paraplegia, family history of unprovoked or estrogen provoked VT in the first degree relative, low risk thrombophilia, multiple pregnancy, IVF and ART. Okay, each of uh, these points will be given score one. Okay, advantage of score one is that um, we can add these scores if needed. Okay, if patient is having score one, then that patient will be included among the lower risk. Okay, if the patient is having four or more risk factor then she will go among the higher risk group okay four or more risk prophylaxis from the first trimester and if the patient is having three risk factor then prophylaxis from 28 weeks means then that patient will be included among the intermediate risk group 
Okay, but if the same patient is having fewer than three risk factors, then that patient will be included among the lower risk group. Okay, so we need to memorize these points. It's very important. And another very important point, um, if we come to the top again, we will see that among the high risk group, we have the patients in which uh, patient had single previous VTE, not related to the major surgery. But in the in, uh, intermediate risk, we also have a single risk thrombophilia patient, but high risk thrombophilia patients, um, single previous VTE, which was related to the major surgery. So that is the difference, okay? Now we have certain transient risk factors like dehydration, hypermesis, current systemic infarction, long distance travel. These patients also need thromboprophylaxis, but only in the antenatal period. Okay, so that is uh, something about antenatal management. Now come to the postnatal assessment. In the postnatal assessment, also we have certain high risk group, intermediate risk group, and lower risk group. Okay. And it's written that postnatal assessment is to be uh, done on the delivery soon. Okay. Now, we have high risk groups. Okay. The patients who will get at least six weeks postnatal thromboprophylaxis, low molecular weight happen. Okay. So, which patients will need six weeks postnatal uh, low molecular weight thromboprophylaxis? First of all, those patients, any previous VTE. Those patients having any previous VTE. Okay. Secondly, anyone requiring antenatal low molecular weight happen. Okay. In the antenatal period, we gave low molecular weight happen to certain group of patients. Those will definitely need postnatal low molecular weight happen. Okay. And high risk thrombophilia. Okay. Now come to the important point. Low risk thrombophilia plus family history. Now it's very important that we compare it with the antenatal period. In the antenatal period, when we were discussing the low risk group, okay, like obesity, age, parity, among that table, among that box, we have low risk thrombophilia patients and family history. Each of these points are given score 1. Now, in the postnatal period, if these two things are combined, like low risk thrombophilia plus family history, then these patients are included among the high risk. Okay, so it's very important to remember this thing. And another important point to remember it in the same postnatal period is that the same thing, low risk thrombophilia, and family history, if they come separately, as we come down, we find in the low risk group, we will see that we have family history and low risk thrombophilia. If they come separately, then we will give score one to them. But if they come in a combined way, then they are included among the high risk group. Okay, so that was the high risk group. Now come to the intermediate risk group. Uh, in the intermediate risk group, we have first of all cesarean section in the labor. Okay, now another very important point is that if we come down and see elective cesarean section, then we will give score one to that patient. But if in exam scenario, if in MCQ, uh, it comes that patient had his insunction in labor, then we will give a score 3 to those group of patients. Mean those will be included among the intermediate risk. Okay, so cesarean insunction in labor. You memorize that it is included among the intermediate risk. Uh, another point is BMI more than 40 kg per meter scale. Okay, now another very important point to differentiate is that in the previous antenatal period, if BMI was more than 30 kg, we gave score 1. And um, here, in the postnatal period also, when we see the, the box of the low risk group, we have BMI more than 30 kg per meter scale. We will give uh, score 1 to those group of patients. But if BMI is more than 40 kg per meter scale, then we will include those patients among the in intermediate risk group. Okay. Now, another thing is that readmission or prolonged admission for more than 3 days in the perpurium. 
that also counts for the intermediate risk group. Okay, now another thing is any surgical procedure in perpurium except immediate repair of the perineum that is included among the intermediate risk group. Okay, medical comorbidities like cancer, heart failure, SLE. IBD, inflammatory, polyarthropathy, uh, nephrotic syndrome, type 1 diabetes, mellitus with nephropathy, sickle cell disease, and current intravenous drug use, those patients will be included among the intermediate group. Okay? And in intermediate group, we will give low molecular weight heparin at least 10 days postnatal low molecular weight heparin. And if persisting, more than three risk factor, consider extending the thromophilus with low molecular weight happen. Okay, now come to the uh, box of the um, lower risk group. You will see that if age is more than 35, obesity is more than 30 kg per meter squared, parity is more than three, smokers, elective cesarean suction, family history of the VTE, lower risk thrombophilia. As I have told you, that these are separately coming, so each will give the score one. A gross varicose vein is the same as we studied in the um, antenatal period. Current systemic infection, immobility, for example, paraplegia, long distance travel, current preeclampsia, multiple pregnancy, preterm delivery in the previous pregnancy, less than 37 weeks, still birth in this pregnancy, mid cavity rotational or operation, de operative delivery, prolonged labor for more than four hours, and PPH of more than one liter uh, or blood transfusion. If two or more risk factors are present, those patients will be among the intermediate risk group. If fewer than two risk factors are present, then low risk group, and we would need early mobilization, and we will avoid distance, we will avoid dehydration. Okay, now come to the another chart, the same things that explain. Okay, the, those things which we discussed in the previous appendix, the same things are written in a proper form. Basically, we use uh, this form for uh, the patient's assessment. In NHS, this form is used for each and every patient in the antenatal period and in the postnatal period as well. There is separate chart for the postnatal period. It's separate chart for the antenatal period. Uh, but here in this chart, um, almost everything is explained. Okay, so coming to the scores, uh, as we discussed that uh, red one is for the high risk group and those are having previous VT except the single event related to the major surgery as we discussed before, score 4 will be given to those patients. Now, those who are included in the orange group, they are given score 3. Each and every component is given score 3. Like previous VTE provoked by major surgery score 3, known high risk thrombophilia score 3, medical comorbidities, comorbidities like cancer, heart failure, active SLE, inflammatory polyarthropathy, or inflammatory bowel disease, nephrotic syndrome, type 1 diabetes, mellitus with nephropathy, sickle cell disease, current intravenous drug user. These patients are given score 3. Okay, now, family history of unprovoked or estrogen-related VT in the first degree relative, okay? As we discussed before, family history, if comes separately, we will give score 1. Known low risk thrombophilia, no VT, score 1, okay? And if, come, if both of these things come in combined manner, the, then we will include among the intermediate risk group. Now, age of more than 35, score 1. Obesity, 1 or 2, means depends upon the BMI. If BMI is 30, more than 30, score 1. If BMI is more than 40, then score 2. Parity, more than 3, score 1. Smoker, score 1. Gross varicose veins, score 1. Now, obstetric risk factors are very important to be discussed. In the postnatal period, we do this assessment. Like, um... Also, we can do uh, antenatal assessment like this. if the patient is having preeclampsia in the current pregnancy in the antenatal period, score 1. If the patient had ART or IVF, then in the antenatal period only, we will give score 1 and give low molecular weight heparin accordingly. 
मल्टीपल प्रेगनेंसी को रन नाउ सिजेरियन सेक्शन इन लेबर ओके सिजेरियन सेक्शन इन लेबर स्कोर टू अलक्टिव सिजेरियन सेक्शन स्कोर वन मिड कैविटी और रोटेशनल ऑपरेटिव डिलीवरी स्कोर वन प्रोलॉन्ग लेबर फॉर मोर देन ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स स्कोर वन पी पी एच ऑफ मोर देन वन लेटर और ट्रांसफियन स्कोर वन प्री टर्म लेबर ऑफ लेस दैन थर्टी सेवन वीक्स इन द करंट प्रेगनेंसी स्कोर वन स्टिल बर्थ इन द करंट प्रेगनेंसी स्कोर वन नाउ एमंग द ट्रांसिट रिस्क फैक्टर्स इट्स रिड इन दैट एनी सर्जिकल प्रोसीजर इन द प्रेगनेंसी और परप्यूरम एक्सेप्ट इन टू इमीजिएट रिपेयर ऑफ द पैरिनियम फॉर एग्जाम्पल अपेंडिसक्टमी पोस्ट पॉर्टम स्टेरिलाइजेशन एंड हाइपर इमेसिस वुड बी गिवन स्कोर ऑफ थ्री Now, if the patient is having ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, first trimester only, will be given score four, and we will include among the highest group. And current systemic infarction score one, immobility or dehydration score one. Now coming to the uh, appendix three, in which risk assessment for venous thromboembolism scores are given means these are the same thing which we discussed. Okay, and if score more than four antenatally, consider thromboprofile profile axis from the first trimester. If total score antenatally is three, then thromboprofile axis from twenty eight weeks. If total score more than two, consider thromboprofile axis for at least ten days. If admitted to the hospital antenatally, consider thromboprofile axis. If prolonged admission more than three days or readmission to the hospital within perpetuum, consider thromboprophylaxis. For a patient with an identified bleeding risk, the balance of the risk of the bleeding and thrombosis should be discussed in consultation with hematologists with expertise in thrombosis and bleeding in pregnancy. Now, what are the contraindication or cautions to the use of the low molecular weight heparin? That uh, is the non-bleeding like um, thrombophilia or von Willebrand disease or acquired coagulopathy. Active antenatal or postpartum bleeding, and women considered at risk of the major hemorrhage like placenta previa. Thrombocytopenia platelet counts of less than seventy-five cross standard risk for one night per liter, and acute stroke or previous four week in the previous four weeks if patient had stroke like hemorrhagic or ischemic, then we have to uh, we don't have to give low molecular weight heparin. If the patient has severe renal disease like T O four of less than thirty ml per minute per one point seven three. Meters scam. Then we need to be cautious. And severe liver disease like prothrombin, time above the normal range or non varices, uncontrolled hypertension, blood pressure of more than two hundred millimeter mercury systolic or more than one twenty millimeter mercury diastolic. Then these patients will be included among the high risk. Means the risk of having bleeding. Okay, so it would be better to avoid the molecular weight heparin or use with a caution. Okay, so that was just a brief description. Thank you so much for your patience.